Amen, amen. Good to see everybody out. Amen, 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 amen. amen.
I got. I know. That's why. He's, that's why it's hot. His face is red. Anyway, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, Daddy and Mama, just kidding. I know I'm going to get it when I get home. Always do. We'll go over the request that we have. Right, we have one here from Sister Regina. It says, please pray for Sister Trudy. So remember Sister Trudy McMillan. She needs prayer. Also, amen, we all need that. Remember Brother Dean? I guess he... Good. Thank the Lord for that, but just continue to remember Brother Dean. We're still praying for him. Remember Peggy, too. Remember Sister Peggy. Yes. That's right. I was going to say, I didn't right. remember Brother Mark. He's sick this afternoon, but he's having also a hard time getting his mother. He needs to be uh, put in assisted living. She's got all the hours. So remember that. That was fighting my way on it. Hey man, just remember Brother Mark, he's sick, and remember that. Remember little Abby, she's still having problems with her ear and her sinus problem. So remember little Abby, still remember her. Sister Jean's having car trouble, that's why she's not here. Sister Gail's family's traveling, Lord knows who they are is traveling. <coughs> Brother Duty there, Duty's friend uh, Dean was in a car accident, so we need to continue to pray for him as we pray. We'll go over the prayer list here too. Sister Nellie Calhoun, Bucky <coughs> Porter, Wayne Az, Jody Smith, Harley Ray, Johnny Eubanks, Dennis Loggins, Wanda, Wanda Frayer, Gwen Johnson, Ricky Brown, Tracy Reeves, Joy Stevens, Slim Duncan, Greg Moat, Angie McCoy, Merle Sims, Howard Pollock and his granddaughter, Holly Holquist, Jim England, Freddie, Reed, uh, Freddie Reeves, Russell Griffith, Seth Sims, Neil Gaines, Linda Taylor, Jamie Britt, Lenore Pilgrim, Emily Coughlin, Gail Forster, Eva Perdue, Michaela Slayton, Brother Sweeting, Sister Prakash, Sister Sweeting also, Jonathan Cochran, Keith Wilson, Jason DeSantos, Scott and Pam Harry, David <coughs> Mathis, Brother Darty's List, Justin Sutton, Deborah Jones, Brother Frank Prater, Debbie Donahue, Frank Sorrells, Alan Klein, Brian Lou Allen, Tom Welch, Alan, Anna Quinn, Brother Boatwright, Asa and Grace, Brother George Canada, Brother Don Ginn, Sister Lloyd Pendleton, Kyle Allison, Leon Daniels, Keith and Jeff Lamb, John Bolivon, Hobart Arnold, Sonia Kelly, Rebecca Johnson, Denny Harris, and Charles Cape. Just remember those as we pray also. Just remember that. Also remember uh, from Brother Joe, they'll be going to the, uh, going down to Brother Tom's new nursing home March the 12th at 1030. If anybody wants to go, let him know. Just next Saturday, right? So you need to let Brother Joe know if you're going to be traveling down there. I know we all have unspoken requests this afternoon. Let's all go, Lord, and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us come out this afternoon, Lord. Remember the ones that are going to travel, and Lord, remember Matt and BB as they travel back, be with them, and all the other people that are traveling, Lord, you come down and bless them. Bless the ones that need need a touch from you, Lord. Remember Brother Dean there was a special prayer. Come down and touch him this afternoon, Lord. The ones that are traveling, Sister Gail's family's traveling, be with them. The ones on the prayer list that need a touch. Lord, remember Sister Jean in the fixing of her vehicle, Lord. And we also have one also, too, that we need a touch also, Lord, to take care of. Just continue blessing us all and be with Dad and give him strength this afternoon. And Lord, most of all, you forgive us for all of our sins. We love you for your many, many blessings that you give us on a daily basis. Keep us all safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll go over the uh, birthday list. Who we got in March? We have Brother Anderson. Right. He's 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 pretty old. <laughs> I'm not gonna say how old he is, but he's pretty old. Brother Hal Thomas. Don't see him, but he's 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 pretty old. Jonathan Cochran. He's not young. I mean, he's not old. Sister Sister Darty. Your birthdays this uh, month, Brother Joe Salas and Jaden Cochran. Also, I was trying to see and Matthew Dale. Matt, Matt's is uh, tomorrow, so just remember that. We'll go with uh, let's go E flat. Let's go with E flat. E flat. E B. E B. E B. Oh, happy birthday!
one announcement that they're the uh, Brother Daniel Gisson Diners uh, 11th an anniversary meeting is coming up uh, which will be this coming Friday Saturday and Sunday if anybody needs any information it is up here I've got them that make that announcement you can be seated okay. Amen, amen. Let's send this notebook. It's turned over to number 32. I was going to change it back and do two other songs. It was my intention to set up new brother. Uh, Marlo done both of them this morning, so, but that's okay. Amen, amen. Amen. We just go back to the same old word about the sea. A lot of people don't remember this. I remember. Gabriel, are you coming? And uh, lift the offering for us this afternoon. We'll 
worship Him in tithes and offers. Amen, amen. I do a lot of time go dig up. Find out what's going on.
tell you what, I said, now, I got to say something. I'll tell you what. I appreciate these guys back here. Amen. And I'm going to ask Amen. Gary over here a question. And I believe, in, I believe it's right. I don't believe they can go in Nashville and play a song that maybe we've heard before, never practiced. And he didn't know he was going to sing them just a little bit ago. And come out any better than we come out right here. Amen. 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 We're blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's all. Let's just stand and we'll change all the service. I, you know, I read a lot of scripture and I find out music's important. Want brother Bob coming done and the way he done it and the way these brothers and sisters played and backed him up. You're in for a treat this afternoon. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. everybody in the house of the Lord. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, turn where we've been reading in Ephesians. And then we've got about three other scriptures to be read, but we'll read in Ephesians. And then we'll turn to the others after you're seated, but it's good to, good to see each one. Uh, remember to pray for, I know you have, but Sister Audrey's having trouble with the blood pressure. As some of us that's had blood pressure problems and still have it, you can pray and believe with them and you know for the Lord to reach down and touch her and, and take away that that problem with the with the blood pressure. So let's just let's just do that. Remember pray for each one. Remember Brother Dean and pray for that. Remember the uh, um, ministers meeting will be this coming Saturday at uh, Brother Gerald Hughes, so remember that and to the ministers that can go. And then the fellowship meeting will be the third Saturday at uh, Brother Tom Crochane's so remember that. Then it'll be here, you know, in the month of of May. So remember these. So first, in Ephesians 1, and then we'll go over to some of the other scriptures. But our, Father, we thank you. We love you. We ask you to just bless and guide each and every one of us into your understanding, Father. And we believe that your word is true. And as I was saying this morning, Lord, I found where you, your prophet said it unto us that you don't have to heal to prove your power but you have to heal to prove your word because you said it and then you'll keep it so reach down and touch sister thomas and let everything be all right there and bring the blood pressure down make it normal and all be well and remember brother dean lord and touch him remember each one of the others here that are sick among us remember our wife lord with her with her back problems and just you let your love be with each one we love you and we thank you Forgive our sins, because that's where we want to stand complete in you. And then, Lord, come and speak to our hearts and lives. Open truly the eyes of our understanding to the revealed word. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians 1. Now, we were talking about this last night, 
you know, I think Sister Trudy mentioned it. And see, Ephesians 1, I keep reading basically, not all of it, but uh, do it. But to me, this is an entire Bible in its own. In other words, if you want to know what the Bible's talking about, read Ephesians 1. It covers everything from the new birth to chosen in Him, adoption, the change. Uh, everything is right there in Ephesians 1. So if you want to just keep reading over it and over it and over it, it really helps me to anyway, you know, to read it. So let's start with verse 3. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted or at in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, what, to adopt us, to, to finish this whole thing up, see, in this day, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. You may be seated, the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, if you would, I'd like for you to turn with me to uh, let's go to John 6 first. Just read, you know, a few scriptures and then get into our thought. Uh, John 6, verse 66. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Brother Random said, in other words, three things, three kind of believers. He said unto in verse 67, will you go, will you go, will ye also go away? And Brother Random said, he's, in other words, he was saying, said, do you wish to go away? In other words, do you wish to go away? You know. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. And ye believe and are sure that thou, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay? Go to John uh, 10, verse 28. Now watch these scriptures now. Now we know what it is where he's talking about my sheep, verse 27, hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never, never, neither perish, shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. All right, going over now to John 17, in verse 1 through 3. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also shall may glorify thee as thou hast given him power no. give it to the son power over all flesh that he should give and watch not if he had it and he can tell them but that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him right, now if they're not given to him you know remember the scripture uh, no man can come unless the Father draw it. Right? And this is eternal life. Now, I wrote in my Bible a long time ago, what is eternal life? That's what I wrote in my Bible many years ago. What is eternal life? Verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent that you may know, not think about it and guess about it. That word know is a wonderful word. 
It's like it is in the book of Job, of Job where he says, I know my Redeemer liveth. Amen. It's, it's a positive statement. It's not even a question or point or nothing. It's positive. I know. I know in whom I believed. All right. So then, you know, eternal life can only come by Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not because you and I are so good, goody people, and and all of this, that, and the other. It's not on our merits. It's on the basis of what He said. All right. Now, this not to back up much, but to review just a little bit of what we were talking about this morning. And I told Brother Joe to go ahead and title that what is the seat of God because that's what I want you to look at, you know, or did this morning. What is the seat of God? Is it a, some kind of something that you got to put a spot? Well, I was born with this seed in me. What was it? Where was it? Amen. Well, I don't know, but I just believe the prophet. Well, all right. So do we all. Amen. Yeah. But remember, Judas was there with him. Yeah, right. You say, yeah, but I'm chosen. Well, remember, Judas was too. That's right. Judas had part of the ministry. That's right. If you got part of the ministry, he had part of the ministry. He cast out devils, healed the sick. That's right. We better consider, all right? But see, what is the seat of God? It's the Word of God. Amen. Well, then it was it a word written down inside of you, as I said, tattooed inside of your soul somewhere, or what was it? Or was it simply like the little woman that she had the germ of life? She had heard and she believed that the Messiah would someday come. And she believed that. Well, when he came, that was what, you know, was quick under made alive right there. But now remember what we were trying to bring out this morning. You know, did that give her eternal life? The prophet said the word was made alive right there. Amen. Amen. But did that give her eternal life? No. Yeah. The little woman that touched the hem of his garment, yeah, she was healed. Right. Did that give her eternal life? No, the prophet said it was faith for the time. Because that's all those people back there could have. Right. Right. David could kill a bear, a lion, and a giant, and then say, well, glory, come on, anybody else? Because, you know, God has anointed me. Right. Huh? And he knew it. See, then that was what I was trying to get the point across. See, then the germ of life would be that that God foreknew right. that you would receive when you came here. All right. But like I said about the little one, like I said about Peter, Peter emphatically stated by the Holy Spirit, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But that didn't give him eternal life. He had to wait till the day of Pentecost. But you see, that's where we don't take things that I say and, and break it down and look at it and take the, the, the law of just dividing something until you see what's right. You know, if you were if you were taking a uh, test today and it was a multiple choice, well, on the multiple choice, there's always say like four answers, right? And and on that, there's always two of them that is so so out of right. thought until you just mark them two off, and you're not dealing. That's what a lot of people do though, because they'll sit down there, you know, instead of just going down and looking at it and there's questions so and so and so and so. That don't work, that don't work. Now it's between them two. A lot of people, they'll get that question number one. Well, let's see. Maybe it's possible that could be true. Matter while the teacher says, well, who's answered all the questions? Well, I ain't got number one yet. Because maybe it could be true. You haven't taken a, just X out the ones that's no good. Right. You know, and then you're only dealing with two. Then you can just, there's nothing else, you can take a chance like I used to do. Yeah, every other one was always true. <laughs> so you got bound to hit it somewhere. You know? But but see, we don't do that. We try to figure out anything. Stop trying to figure it out. Just accept what God said. I haven't figured out yet what He saved me for. Have you figured out what God saved you for? No. See, just don't worry about it. Then you just let it go. All right. But see, the little woman, she had representation 
from predestination. God knew she would hear the word and she would believe it above the Pharisees and the things, the religious people. Right. And thereby he could come to that. That was the seed of God. That was what was in her. Not some form of some kind of seed stuck down in there, you know. Because you remember how we're trying to bring it out now? Because science can't find a germ of life. Right. Well, if they can't find a germ of life, how are you going to find a germ of eternal life? And certainly not playing around the bean field. Right. But listen, by God's foreknowledge, He would look down through and He'd see that you wanted it, so He had it there for you. Right. Right. But now He'd see that you wanted it. Now we've got to move on. See, we've tried to cover some things, but we've got to move on in the message to get some points. And today I want to get something out of the way. I know I've got a lot of quotes and things, but I want to get something out of the way that should give us, uh, you know, a, a, a thought and, and uh, take away some things and be able to uh, walk on with what we're doing. All right. Now, but we read there, he said, I give them eternal life. Well, if God's going to give you eternal life, all right, as I said this morning, there's one thing for sure. There's two things that are right. First, he's going to give it to you. That's his promise. Right. Number two is you didn't have it. That's right. Well, I come into the world with eternal life. I've got what the prophet said, and you ain't going to get me to deny that. I've faced them before in the Baptist and all down through there, you know. You can't get me to deny that Trinity. Because if I deny the Father, I've denied the Son. Hmm. You never kind of quote scripture to you like that? Hmm. Just quoting it wrong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But they'll bring it to you that way because that's the carnality of man's kind. Alright? But now listen. When you're dealing with the Word of God. You see how vital it is for the Word to be planted pure and unadulterated. Alright? Come now we covered a message there on talking about it. In non seed, there is nothing to quicken. Alright? Now, non seed is, we know that it, it's, it's, it has no life in it. Right. Alright? But in the Bible, the, of talking about the word those Pharisees knew the letter of the word perfect they could tell you everything that it said but when they faced the Lord Jesus Christ they proved that they were non seed there was nothing in them to quicken you said but brother Dale they had all the word yeah, and they could tell you all of the great parables and all of the great things that went on. They could show you everything. Go find you a good Jew now. He can really explain or expound upon the Word. If you hadn't listened to anybody, listen to that. Rabbi Richmond comes up to Brother Biscoe's a lot. He can make it look so beautiful out of the Scriptures. But see, dead to the reality. That's non-seed when you're talking about Christians. Hmm? When you're dealing in the Christian realm, when you're dealing in the religious realm, I'd better say, instead of Christian, in the religious realm, when you're dealing with it, you're dealing with people that know the letter. But yet, if they don't have that germ of life, those Pharisees knew the letter. But they called Jesus Belzebub. The prostitute had only just a little bit that maybe she knew. I know the prophet said that she knew the the the, the message or the, the Bible. But still, she didn't know it like the Pharisees knew. Huh? But yet, there was a connection there that she had that germ of life. That representation, God knew all he had to do was just land there. One of these days, we'll get back to the, to the gifts of the ministry and the fivefold ministry, how they come predestinated eternally. Now, not the guy's in. You know, but the gifts because... See, that way, God sent somebody by to find you. There's your gift, see. He sent them by. Because He knew what it would take to contact you. All right? 
See, now, like Brother Dick says, if, if I would have come along to him expounding all of the great things, maybe, of doing or whatever, or, you know, hammering him to death about something, then he probably wouldn't accept it, what I said. Right. That's right. That's, That's the way I was with Brother Mode. If he'd have come forward like a lot of people in this message, say they introduced the message, I wouldn't have ever accepted it. But when I asked him to put it in the Word, right. yeah. so then that gift worked. Right. Yeah. Brother Ram said, if, if you got a question in your heart, he said, God's obligated. He said he'll put somebody on the platform to answer that question. Amen. Now, it may not be a true child. I told you about the, the way that I, I learned that we had to get back, or I had to get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would a Baptist preacher come in and preach all you do in word and deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's the way I learned it. And he wasn't a believer in this message. But I believe God sent him. Right? He used that gift that day. And I come out of there saying, hey, they come out of there praying in Jesus' name. I come out of there heading to the creek, you know. Because I knew what I had to do. But see, now watch my point. God at one time, according to Acts 17, or 29 and 30, right through there, he said that there was a time that he winked at our ignorance. That's right. All right. Down through the times that, that they were not, you know, it was not uh, time for the word. He would wink at her ignorance about things. In other words, he, we could believe a trinity and still be a Christian. Yep. There was a time you could be as trinitarian as good and believed in three literal gods and still be a Christian. Right. Sure. Because that was the day and the hour because we were not responsible. Right. But now he commands everybody to repent. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So we got to walk in the truth. Amen. Okay. So now watch then then the word has to be planted the message then of the prophet of God it took God to you know it, it took a special person to bring the message that this prophet brought he brought us the message of God I believe pure and unadulterated and I believe he vindicated it to be that All right. but now you know yourself that there's a lot of <clears throat> places that seemingly the prophet is contrary one to the other in his statements and his doings and you know it, it just seems to be like that well he was over here and he said one thing over here he'd say another and, and you know that's true right. All right. but see you take and you, you, you keep studying it and you find out that what he was doing was trying to explain something exactly right, All right. And that was the only way he could explain. Amen. Right. Not that he was going this way or going that way. He was trying to explain it. Right. And it looked like it was contrary one to the other, which it wasn't contrary. Right. See? It was perfectly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. All right. See, then now then we come to the basis of seeing one thing. I gave it to you there, which I've given it to you many times before, but on birth pains, Brother Brown was talking about the planning of the word. And he said that's why there's not so many new births. Right. Right. Genuine ones. Right. Hey. Not so many of them. All right. Not so not so many rather genuine new births. It's because the seed, now this is what he says. The seed is, no, it stops now. Maybe we'll sympathize right. with the word or the person. Now what does it mean to sympathize? In other words, you, you go along and listen. You, 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 you sympathize with it. But watch what he says. But they don't want to rot away from the old system that they were in. Now I can spend all afternoon talking about doctrines of the people of this message that can be taken exactly back to the denominational periods of time and down through time that those doctrines were there. There was a doctrine in the Baptist called Two Seeds in the Spirit. And it was linked basically to what would be called the Two Soul Doctrine. The Mormon doctrine of pre-existence is the, is the Two Soul Doctrine. See, these doctrines are not new. I've tried to tell you that these things were before. And that's Brother Ray. He was listening in 80, what? In 2000, he was listening. And I was talking then about the River Jordan Doctrine. Right. 
because he's copying the tapes off now and doing it. And that was back in the 80s and probably even in the 70s when they were talking about this River Jordan doctrine. These guys didn't come up with something new. That doctrine's been around a long time. We had a minister's meeting, either here or there, one, literally about that in probably the 70s. You know, because it came up there. But you see, all these doctrines are not new. They're, they're just a new way of explaining it. So what do they do? Sympathize, you know. In other words, get in a little bit, but not enough. See? And they don't want to rot away from the old system that they were in. Listen, they don't want to come out of it. They want to stay in the system and claim the new birth or the message of the age. Hmm? Well, I believe this all the time. When Paul Jones, excuse me, <laughs> called his name and I'm trying to get away from that, but when they started that doctrine of the two souls, they, a fellow said one day, he said, I've waited on this all my life. You know. See? But how many of you sympathize with it? Well, you know, Brother Dale, they're good people. And you know, they, they've got, they, you're just too dogmatic. Because they're saying the same thing you are. I don't think so. But they'll say, you know, people, that's sympathizing with it. And you sympathize with it, you know what? You've got their doctrine. And some of these days, that's going to have to be killed in you. You say, well, I don't know really where the two soul doctrine's right or not. I don't know about it, but. You know, or, or I, I, I kind of think that might be something to that. Well, now you're sympathizing. You're not taking of what I call the, the law of, of just lay it down and say, if this is right, this can't be right. Amen. right. There's either going got to be one God right. or there's got to be some other form. Yeah. Right. All right? Now, See, it can't be Trinity, oneness, or whatever. That's right. So you just analyze it. <laughs> so that can't be. That's right. See, you can't have two souls. Amen. No, that's right. If you got two souls, you got two gods. Right. Because a God had to create the soul. Right. And that's why they say Satan created one, God created one. Satan can't create. That's right. So, bloop, there it goes. Right. Yeah. I've analyzed that. It can't be. Okay. Now, I don't care what all the quote sounds like. It can't be. Why? Because I've used the law of average on it. You say, well, that ain't supposed to be in the Revelation, brother. <laughs> okay. You'd have to know what I'm talking about anyway. But now listen. Then we've seen that it's not the person 154 church age book it's not the person that comes predestinated eternally from God Amen. it's the word or seed That's right. Right. now so the seed or word you know, all right, it can be predestinated eternally from God right. but the person is predestinated by foreknowledge are you following? Yes. But the seed is part of God. Right. Now we're not talking about dead letters. We're not talking about letters on a page. Right. When I talk about the Word of God, I'm talking about not a letter of a word. I'm talking about the revealed Word. Right. The alive Word. Right. Mm -hmm. huh? See? And that can only be that God would be the Word. Because there is no life outside of that. That's right. So everything in the world is predestinated. What? By God's foreknowledge. That's right. Amen. But it's not the person then that comes predestinated. It's the seed. That's right. See, then he goes on to express that Jacob alone was seed. He said Jacob had the seed. 
That is why he had respect to the birthright and covenant of God. Now Jacob was the seed. You say, well, now, what was any difference to him and Esau? Esau was a better man. But Jacob, what seed did he have? Hmm? Now the only thing I know the difference between Jacob and Esau like I said, if you were looking at him, you'd pick Esau. Now, what was the difference between Jacob and Esau? Esau done everything he could. He helped his daddy. He, he hunted for him. He brought him meat. He, he worked <coughs> himself to death trying to help his daddy. Yep. And old Jacob was a shyster. The only thing you can find good about Jacob is one thing. What? He had his mind set on that birthright. Right? right? He had his mind on that birthright. He was going to get that birthright. It don't make no difference what he had to do. Now, Brother Branham says, indeed, see, we know what it types in, that it types what? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because you were to have your mind set on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it don't matter what you got to do to get it, you got to get it. Right. 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 That ought to be it, because that ought to be your one thought. Right. Let's see. But Esau, he didn't cherish the birthright. Because to my understanding in it, see, the birthright would get maybe sometime a double portion maybe out of the thing, but still the other one would get something, because wasn't that what Esau said? But ain't there something right. for me? Right. He said, yes, look what you did. You got all this. <coughs> and look at him. Over there. They, even now, you can say Israel got a double portion, but look at them. They're sure, a whole lot smaller than right. all the things around them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's dealing with the promise. Right. But see, that's the only thing you can say about Jacob. Right. That he had his eyes set on the birthright. Mm -hmm. right. Now, what would that be then? That would be the germ of life. But now Jacob never received the new birth. Right. So we got to move further away right. to be able to understand. But that's an example to show it to us. All right. Now, so God by foreknowledge, He predestinated everything that would ever be in the world. And see, then that's not calling it a respectable person. That's right. We'll get to it in a minute where he says even your natural birth is predestinated of God. Sure. Hmm. See? Then it's not working about whether predestination's right or not. It's trying to find out what we understand. To be able to God to predetermine something to be that he could love love Jacob and hate Esau before they were ever born. Hmm. And we want to make it some kind of a great spiritual thing. You know. We want to make it something that we can just makes us feel good. Well, it makes me feel good to realize the Word of God and how God does things. All right. Now, but watch now. There's not too many new births, genuine ones. Why? Because the seed is not planted correctly right. now how can God give birth to a non-seed now can God give a new birth to to a trinity no it's impossible now there were a lot of trinitarian people as I said God winked at her ignorance there were a lot of trinitarian people that got the new birth right. Amen. Azusa Street when the Holy Ghost fell there on 1906 was actually Trinitarians. Right. The one that didn't come to about 1912, somewhere along about there. God winked at the ignorance. But now He commands us to repent. I believe the Word. Now He didn't plant the Word incorrect. He planted it perfect. Right. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost could fall on it. Right. 
Right. That's right. So see, you've got to be back here in the end time to once again do what he done. That's why I believe the Son of Man coming back in the end time. I believe it. Amen. I believe he's in the bride of Jesus Christ right now. Amen. Sowing the seed of the word. Right. Now he's not in all of this message people. Right. No. But he's in the bride in the end time sowing the seed right. pure and unadulterated. Right. Right. All right. You said, well, Brother Dale, I, I thought when we got on over there, you know, we, there wouldn't be too many being saved. Well, where'd you get the idea? Right. You, you, you've got a denominational concept. I'm in. See? Oh, my. Right? Because Brother Ram said he didn't know how many to be saved in that last moment right. to rapture the church. We don't want that quote. Right. Well, I just don't see that nobody, people are hardly can be saved anymore. Well, you know, you wouldn't have dare said that about 20 years ago when you wasn't saved. Right. Right? right. You see, you find out, you know, why would anybody get that concept in their mind? Why would they have it in the Baptist that they wouldn't have a revival? Because <laughs> they're afraid somebody might get saved that didn't want to be, that God didn't want them saved. Now, that's a doctrine of the Baptist church. What do you see in this message, people? I think it's about over, don't you? I just don't see no more people getting saved. I think it's over. Well, what about your kids? What about your grandkids? What about your great-grandkids? It's all right if you're in, isn't it? I can't help it the prophet said it. I didn't say that. I would think with you if it hadn't, he hadn't made that statement. It, it looked like it's over, but he said, I don't know how many be saved in the last moment to rapture the church. Well, you know, it might be that we've got to get this word planted, pure and unadulterated before there could be any birth. Come on. Amen. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, Brother Dale, we all claim to have a new birth. Well, claiming to have it and it really having it, two different things. You can make a lot of claims. But you see, the new birth won't deny the word. Remember I said, God believes his word. Well, won't his children believe it? Well, you're just not popular. <laughs> Who's worried about popularity? I'm worried about preaching the gospel to you. Somebody else listen, that's fine. I'm preaching the gospel of what I try to believe. Hmm? All right. All right. But now, we read it there, and we've read it over and over in Ephesians that we were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. Well, now, if, if that's sensible wording, you know, then it means one thing. If we were chosen in Him, some way, we've got to have the understanding that we had to be in Him. Amen. Because if not, you'd be chosen of Him. And if we were chosen of Him, like we take the words to be, then that would make Him being a respecter not fulfilling his whole plan. Uh, I know it'll be later on, there's another couple of messages down the road, but I quoted this morning. Brother Brown said it was in him to be a father. Amen. See, we think that's happened, something happened on down the road after he'd existed. It was in him to be a healer. Your, your mind is still locked on the fact that it had to be sickness and it had to be a loss. No. Get it unlocked. Right. Get it to the basis of seeing what it's really saying. Right. If it was in him to be a father, you know what it meant? He was a father. Right? right. 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 You know it was in me to be a father. Right. The day I was born. Right? Sure. right? But it took 20 years and a wife to display that. But it doesn't matter, it was already in there. 
So if we were chosen in Him, that meant we had to be in Him. Now we're going back further into predestination than what our thoughts have been on. We've been dealing with foreknowledge as dealing with what happens in life. You know. Now I'm not going to get on it, but I will when I get time that where it says the morning star sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Now that had to be in God somewhere. Amen. And that was before the Lamb was slain. The, because Brother Brown said they saw the plan of redemption and he uses Revelations 13.8. You say, Brother Dale, do you mean that do you believe there was something back there? Well, everybody else does. But what do they believe was back there? They said, Brother Branham, were we spirits back there? He says, No, you wasn't nothing. You was only in his mind. Amen. Well, that's what we're going to be dealing with. But it turned out to be the greatest mystery of all. The mystery how that we were in Him. Because that's what Jesus said. What was it? I in you and you in me. Now it's easy to see or understand or try to comprehend I in you. We can say that's the new birth. He's in us. But it said you in me. The vast difference between the two statements but Jesus made them right together and he must have believed it because that's what he said all right now see then we've got to go back to find out how were we in him right. when we cannot put ourselves back there as people Because that would bring pre-existence. And we certainly know that this it would have a problem in your mental capacity of your mind to try to think that your body existed. Because it's now getting older. Alright. Okay then. But now listen. We talk about eternity. We say eternity has no beginning and has no end. So now, here's where the preachers need to listen a little bit, maybe and hold on to it. Especially that because they're the ones trying to explain it. If you can't preach predestination, and if you can't preach eternity, let me put it that way, if you can't preach eternal, as going just as far that way, and never stopping. Because if your thoughts ever stop, it's not eternal. But at the same time, you must be able to preach it back that way. Because if not, you're going to have it a starting point and going. Okay, everybody with me? Yes. So if it's eternal, it had no beginning and has no ending. That's right. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. So then you've got to be able to go as far that away. Yeah. But you've got to be able to go as far that away. Right. And it's not that they've got to come and turn around and meet each other. That's what I said about eternity as we say it's like a circle. That's just our expression. Right. No. Eternity means it's going that away eternally. Amen. And it means it come from there eternally. Right. Right. It's not a circle to connect back. Right. Make it that's what we make it sound like. Make it a beautiful no. <laughs> Alright, now I'm gonna just say this much 
Now I preached and just got through with the series preaching. And I preached that people believed that all God was He poured into Christ and all Christ poured into church and take her back to the Garden of Eden. All right? that's, that's good. How wonderful. We believe that. But if you notice that as I was bringing it, I didn't stop anywhere. I preached it all the way into eternity. That there is a message of cheer, the prophet said, to be given to us in the eternal ages to come. You remember that? See, then I didn't stop. I didn't preach it up to the future home and stop. I didn't preach it to the millennium and stop or whatever. I preached it to the basis of showing you what I believe that if God is eternal, then there'll, there'll be a, an eternal partaking of the living God after this world is over. We just come here to get enough understanding, to get enough God in us to be able to understand what that God is. Yes, and when I got through that message, I didn't stop. It's still going. Because if He's eternal, how can you exhaust an eternal Word? See, what's our problem is we say eternal Word, but you know what our brain says? And you know what our conscious inside of us says? Word, 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 stop, 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 word, 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 word. That's what I say. That's, that's our mind. Our brain stopped us from thinking about the word can be eternal. We think words, words on the page, words on the page. This book, book, we got this book, this book here. We got a book, 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 book. See. But in eternal word, when we're ten million trillion zillions or whatever you can say into eternity, we'll still be receiving the revelation. That's right. Of Almighty God. Because it didn't stop. Now, I was hoping somebody would bring that up to me one day. Now, if we can't go back that way and keep on going back that way in the correct way then we just looking forward you're not taking the word eternal that's why your prophet would emphasize we don't believe in eternal sonship he said because sons have a beginning so we covered it what that one day the son will be under subjection to the Father that God may be all in all. See? Not done away with. Right. We'll still see Jesus and realize He was Almighty God. That's right. Amen. But if we can't go back that away with it now, see that what we're saying out there is just non seed. If I can't go, not me, now the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost can't bring it through me to where we can go back there, then there was something wrong with my going that way. Now that's eternal. Hmm? You see why? That there's not too many new births. Genuine ones. Because the preachers can't go that way. And go that way because their thoughts I'll go so far and they'll just make a circle and come right back and tie into the bottom and we'll just make this circle over and over and over no 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 that's just an example it just means it has no beginning and no end that's an example the real truth is it's got to keep going even science says this universe is moving yeah you know? They say ever since the Big Bang Theory where it come from the one great big ball, 
that it's eternal. It's just moving the whole at the whole world, everything, all the planets, and everything. We're moving. Why? Because it's proving God. Now, are you listening, please? If you talk about eternity, you've got to be able to go as far that way as you can go that way. Right. All right. Can you go back that way? How far can you go? <coughs> How far backward can you go? Brother Branham said, in the beginning before the eternal. Now explain that one. When eternity had no beginning, how could he make such a statement in the beginning but before the eternal? He's just trying his best to express that in the beginning is where we can mentally go back to. Whether it be the creation of the world, whether it be angels, whatever it be, that that is the beginning. But before the eternal, the eternal God existed. The prophet said, I'm coming here. I know I ain't going to get to read them, but if you got eternal life, you always was eternal. That's right. But that's the question. If you had it. There's the title to the message. This is predestination number eight. Do put the title to it. Do you have it? Now a question, and Brother Branham, you'll see every time he uses the word if you have it. Now, if is a question. Right. It's not a fact, a statement, it's a question. Right. It means something is uh, cannot be stated. You know. Because it's if. Mm -hmm. If you love me, Jesus said, yeah. you'll keep my commandments. Right. A lot of ifs in the Bible. Because it means that there is a questionable thing involved. If you love me, the question is, do you love me? Right? Do you love me? If you love me, do you love me? All right? Now, but see, we, we just put it where we want to put things. And then we just talk about, well, well, well I just read the word says here. You know, I always was eternal. Well, what if the prophet in the same message says, if you have eternal life? read a little bit. You get number three on your notes, which is taken search. We would see Jesus, 1964, 318. Like in the beginning, God was not even God. He was the great eternal. And in there was attributes. He said attributes was his thoughts. Right, now, what is his attributes? There's three attributes of God. Now, we, we do, I've told you, explained it before, so that's what I'm trying to say again. There's only three attributes of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right. Now, you say, now that healers say, all of those are in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Are you listening now? All the attributes of God is, to, is developed or come from or in the, the basis of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, is, is that sensible? That's the only attributes they are. Yes. Now, healer, savior, etc., has to dwell within Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
All right. Now, then was there ever a time that he was just father, and then he becomes son, and then he becomes the Holy Ghost? Now, that's Trinitarian as all get out. We'll read, and Brother Brown said it was, he dwelt alone with his attributes. That's why I was saying there a moment ago. If he ever was a father, then that was his attribute. So do you know what it meant? For him to be a father? You know what it means? What what makes us a father? We're not talking about the Catholic Church now calling us father or some preacher, you know, his father, so and so. No, we're not talking about that. What makes a father? Yeah, it's offspring. Yeah. That's simple, ain't it? Brother Dale, so deep. <laughs> That's just simple. Huh? So then it, our word for God goes back to self-existing. Then there was a time that he existed with himself. But there, was there ever a time he existed without his attributes? Mm-mm, now. If you do, you're going to start him changing. Doing things. Hmm? We're going to see what eternity is. Like I said, but the message I preach and believe what I see, I'm still going that way. Because I've not limited God nowhere. And I can see down through the endless eternal ages that His Word will just keep unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. Now let's go back that way. And see if we can go back far enough until in our, our thinking we'll see that there never was a time that He didn't exist. And if there never was a time God didn't exist, then there's never been a time that his offspring didn't exist. Right. Or you're going to have to say he developed something along the way. Right. All right. See, now you're going to find out what it means. Always was eternal. Yep. Because if you have eternal life, how many quotes is it there? If you have eternal life, that eternal life always was eternal. Right. Right. Hmm? All right. So let's see what your prophet had to say. Hmm. It was the eternal God and then there was attributes. Attributes was his thought. And then it become a word like this. And a word expressed. Well, a thought expressed is a word. A word expressed is a thought. And then remember... If you ever was in God's thinking, you'll always be there. Watch. If you've got eternal life, there's the if. Right? If you've got eternal life, you are the expression of are the attribute of his thought for this age, if not you. There's only one eternal life. And it always existed. And you in his mind existed before there was a world. That's the reason he said he chose you before the foundation of the world. It isn't what we think, what somebody else thinks, it's what God eternal you always was see in his thinking it was in him to be man now when did that develop right. sure later on right but it was always in him right. sure. that's the reason that Christ was the express image see So where were we? If you was if you ever was in God's thinking, 
You will always be there. If you ever was. Now why is he saying that? Because the if is left up to you and I. You remember I said a lot of times, I said, well now, uh, you know, I say this because it's left up to you to think about it. If God is real, if there is a God, that doesn't mean I doubt that God is real. That doesn't mean I doubt there's a God. It, I, I say it, I said, I, I, I'm leaning it back to you. That's to you if you think. If you think there is a God, why can't you think that God can never have another thought? His thoughts got to be perfect and pure and eternal. See, we put our little ifs in there. I think, wouldn't that what happened to Eve in the garden? She didn't have no right to even think. That's what messed her up. Well, that's, wasn't that even Adam didn't have no right either. He was not throwing off on women. Look at him, proving his word, 1964, 8-16. There stood priest there, said, this man's bells above. See, no representation. Eternal life. You always was. See? You have eternal life. There's only one form of it. That's God. You were his attribute. He thought of you and knowed you before the foundation of the world in his mind. He goes on to explain that those priests had all the representation on earth, but they had no representation in heaven. wasn't in God's thinking at all. But he said this little woman that said, I believe you're a prophet, in other words. All right. Now let's clear up something. People say, but Brother Dale, I believe I was a thought in God's mind. I conned a phrase. I hope it sticks with you. I don't want to be a thought in God's mind. Because he thought of Judas Iscariot. He thought of every person by his foreknowledge that would ever be in the world and how they would be lost. Yep. I want to be part of the thinker. You remember that? I've made that statement how many times? Yeah. I want to be part of the thinker. Right. Well, you just get in and oh, what's the matter? Can't you see that a thought that God would have could be just an, a part of earth to be the point of seeing everything, but to be part of his thinking right. yeah. Amen. would be entirely different. Right. Judas Iscariot was right there in the thoughts of God, but he was not eternal. He proved it because he didn't receive eternal life. Right. But now listen, now God's thoughts are eternal. Okay? So once he thought of Judas being Judas, he could never change. Hmm? See, we, we don't look at those things in the correct order. His thought of you and I could be eternal, but that don't give us eternal life. But if we're a part of God, we always was eternal. Right. Hmm. Simple things. Now we're going to take a lot of reading. I wasn't going to do it just a little bit, but I finally decided if you'll notice number five goes on, 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 on to them arrows and it keeps on going. Okay. That means this is a continuation of reading right out of the church age book. All right. So let's just read. See? People can read you something and say, do you believe that? The prophet said, I can read to you that Judas went and hung himself and you go do likewise. You believe that? 
No, you know why? Because the before and the after explains it, right? You remember, come on board, pay your board because I'm bored with you. The way you're explaining something gives you the answer. All right. But if you continually read at least one thing about it, you've got to admit the prophet said it. But you know how it is. What have you done? A lot of times you went up and talked to people and you say, the Bible says, and you're holding it in your hand, the Bible says, wrong for a woman to cut her hair. What do they say? What's the statement back to you? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Well, what do you mean you don't believe it? <laughs> it's right there. I, I don't believe what you're saying. I didn't say it. That's yeah, that's your interpretation. <laughs> what is interpret? I let you read it. <laughs> right? But you see, we're so spiritual, we think, until we can correct Almighty God. Now that's really doing something, isn't it? So let's just start reading and just follow with me, and I'll try to quit here in a few minutes because I know I can't get to all I've got written down. All right, this is page 149, which is the Church Age book. It's Submarin Church Age, but it's in the Church Age book. All right, this will be 149. It'll be reading through 150 and into 152. All right. Watch carefully now and see this. Before there was ever a speck of stardust, before God was God, and that's a good point. God is an object of adoration, and no one was there to worship Him. So he was at that time only potentially God. And he was known only as eternal spirit. The bride was already in his mind. Amen. Yes, she was. She was existing in his thoughts. And what about those thoughts of God? They are eternal, are they not? I see. Now don't go back there. I'm warning you ahead of time. And make yourself little bitty people running around. That's right. Amen. Any form you want to make. Theophanies, whatever, then you, you've got problems. Anything you want to make it, you got a problem. Leave it alone. Amen. You're going to try to figure it out. Don't try to figure it out. Listen to the prophet explain it. The eternal thoughts of God. Let me ask you. Are the thoughts of God eternal? If you can see this, you will see many things. God is unchangeable in both essence and behavior. We have studied that and proven that already. God is infinite in His ability, so therefore He as God must be omniscient. If He is omniscient, then He is not now learning nor is he taking counsel even with himself, nor is he at any time adding to his knowledge. If he can add to his knowledge, then he is not omniscient. The best you could say is that sometime he will be, but that is not scriptural. He is omniscient. He has never had a new thought about anything because all his thoughts he has always had and always will have and knows the end from the beginning because he's God. <coughs> Thus the thoughts of God are, are eternal. They are real. Now listen to it. They are not. They are not simply like a man with a blueprint. He has grown up which one day will be translated into substance and form but they are already real and eternal and part of God. See, we draw a blueprint, we make something, we draw it up what we want it to look like. He doesn't do that. See how this works? God always had his thoughts for Adam. Adam has his thoughts which yet unexpressed. Mm -hmm. Psalms 139, 15, 16 will give you a little idea of this. Now keep in mind his thoughts was unexpressed. So when he says down here that I, said, I didn't say this talking about Adam. Because he's got to be bringing it down to a deeper meaning. 
Okay? So hold on now and read with me. Psalms, see, 139, 15, 16. We'll give you a little idea of this. So it's going to give you an idea of eternity. Hmm, what it is, or an eternal thought. My substance was not hidden from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. That was talking of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. right. And then talking of mankind. Yeah. Okay. Or the bride. Right. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book were all my members written, which in continuance, see one after the other, was fashioned when as yet there was none of them. That, as I said, was not written about Adam. See, because Adam was unexpressed. So this wasn't written about Adam. See? It's written about him and written about you and I. But it gives you the idea and knowledge that the thought that was there in his mind, and that thought was eternal and had to be expressed. So when Adam was formed of the dust of the earth, and his spiritual being created by God, then Adam became God's thought expressed and those eternal thoughts were now manifested. Right? In other words, he came on earth. Right? Down through the centuries we go. We find a Moses, a Jeremiah, a John the Baptist. Notice all of these are Old Testament. Each one of these were God's eternal thought expressed in its season. Then we come to Jesus, the Logos. He was the perfect and complete thought expressed, and he became known as the Word. That's what he is and forever will be. Now it says that he had chosen us in him, Jesus, before the foundation of the world. That means that we were right there with him in the mind and thoughts of God before the foundation of the world. That gives an eternal quality to the elect. You can't get away from it. Now watch. Let me just inject the thought in here. Even our natural birth is based upon election. The female ovaries, if I pronounce that word, produce many, produce many, many eggs. But why is it that at a certain time a certain egg comes down and not another one. And then amongst the male sperm, for no known reason, a certain germ attaches itself to the egg, while others that could have just as easily attached themselves or had a better opportunity to do so, do so, did not do so, and perished. There is an intelligence behind all, intelligence behind all this. Otherwise, what determines whether the baby is a boy, a girl, blonde, or brunette, light or brown, lighter dark type of eyes and so forth with these thoughts in mind think about Joshua and Caleb did not Jesus say in John 6 49 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead the brother Ryan said that means they, those people he was talking to were eternally dead mm -hmm. those parents that died were necessary as the forefathers of the people of whom Jesus was speaking. In other words, they had to be back there to where these people could stand before Jesus and he could say, and your father that man in the wilderness and they're dead and you're dead too, in other words. They perished, yet they were in the election of God, naturally as Joshua and Caleb were spiritually. But go on. These elect were not only the eternal thoughts of God which were to be expressed in flesh in their due season, but these same elect are called by another name, Romans 4.16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that, which, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Romans 9, 17 through 13. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now I just got to <laughs> preaching on the Isaac and the seed. And the, right? Okay. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. 
not only this but when that Rebecca had also conceived by one even by our father Isaac for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated right, now watch it. Galatians 3.16 now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not and to seeds that's Genesis I mean Galatians 3.16 he saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one and of thy seed which is Christ Galatians 3.29 and if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. According to Romans 4, 16, we find that God has given a sure promise to all of Abraham's seed. And Paul puts himself and all believers under that designation because he said, Abraham, who is the father of us all. Then he goes on to not only narrow down his definition, but rather to finalize it in Galatians 3, he identified the seed singular with Jesus and counted the seed children as children of promise and promise that having to do with election are the choosing of God. And that is exactly what we have been saying. These are the royal seed. These, these who are of the royal seed are the elect of God, are the predestinated, foreknown of God. And we're in the mind of God in his thoughts in very plain language, the true bride of Christ was in the mind of God eternally. Amen. Though not expressed until each came forth in the designated decreed season. And as each member came forth, it became expressed and took his place in the body. Thus this bride is the literal spoken word seed. Spoken word seed bride. And though she is feminine designation, she is also called the body of Christ. It is very apparent that she ought to be called that, for she was predestinated in him, came from the same source. Are you reading? Was eternal with him, and is now manifesting God in a many members body, whereas once God was manifested, now that's cut off on yours, but it says, in one member, even our Lord Jesus Christ. And that was cut off the bottom of yours. So right. now I can't get far enough to get into it what I want we'll go and read one more number six on your note then we're coming to a conclusion as the eternal logos God was manifest in the son and in Jesus all, dwelt all the well all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and that eternal one was the father manifest in flesh and thereby gained the title son of son even so we eternal in his thoughts in our turn became the many membered spoken word seed manifest in flesh and those eternal thoughts now manifest in flesh are the sons of God even as we are so called we did not become seed by the rebirth we were seed and therefore were reborn for only the elect can be reborn because we were seed is the reason we could be quickened in none seed there is nothing to quicken no you have a lot of in there and I'm gonna make this on it and it's on the computer for them to do it you read all of them things by Wednesday and we'll pick up that thought and carry on but read all of these thoughts where brother Branham and, and I gave you where he said like future home people say uh, eternal into the kingdom of God with eternal life of the predestinated that never did start never started on any day you wasn't saved on any day you was always saved yeah. alright I believe that 100% but you better read on because you see you will find in your quotes another quote out of the future home that says if you have eternal life you always was eternal out of the same message that tells you you always was eternal there's a lot of quotes going through there so I can't cover it All right, we'll be here late this afternoon 
But you read them over and over, and we'll put it on the Lord willing this coming Wednesday. We'll start right there. If you have eternal life, you always was eternal. Not you as a person, you know. Not you as what we're looking at. But if you have eternal life, how could you have eternal life? You didn't have a beginning. Or have an ending. If you have eternal life. The eternal life that you have always was eternal. Simple. But Brother Dale, I just believe that quote. When Brother Brown said, I always was eternal. Well, all right. But you see, to those that want to know the truth, they keep on reading. And you see that he says, if you have eternal life, you always was eternal. And you'll find in there one in the future home is where I just read from the future home. Hmm? So is your prophet that confused? Did he teach that we don't have to be born again? No. That was his, his that was his stressing the point. That we had to be born again. We have to receive eternal life. If we receive eternal life, then the eternal life never had no beginning. And can never have an ending. Right? Simple. But do we believe it that way? Or have we got some preconceived idea or thought that we come into the world with eternal life? If you did, then Jesus Christ didn't have to die. You say, well, Brother Dale... All he died, now I got this in the quotes in there, the notes. And I'll cover it. He said, you'd say, well, Brother Dale, all it is is the the new birth and things is just an anointing. That would come on us to let us know. Well, according to the prophet, that anointing left him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Manifested Sons, 1960. The anointing left him in the Garden of Gethsemane. So now where's your new birth from? You see, there's some things there in the the church age book we're going to get down and read. Because I've had these read in my face until it's just, you know. Sometimes you actually don't want to read some of the quotes because they've been read so wrong. Brother Branham says in there, and everybody lays up on that, you know. He said, an eagle can go a long time before it realizes an eagle. Right? He made that statement. But you know, they don't consider one thing. That eagle that was born in the chicken yard <coughs> wasn't a chicken. He didn't even look like a chicken. He didn't even act like a chicken. Right. He born an eagle. When you're born again, that makes you a child of God, right? He was born an eagle by his new birth. But then one day he realized that he wasn't a chicken. Because all that time he thought he was. We used to have an old rabbit, that rabbit would run around through the yard. Great big old sucker. He'd run around through the yard, and them old rabbit dogs would just run right around through there with him and barking. You know, he'd just run around through there. He thought he was a rat, a dog. You know? 
And he was so big that them old rabbit dogs wouldn't boo fool with him. They're afraid of him. But someday, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I guess it was a big old bony hound probably took care of the rabbit. I don't remember what happened because that's gone, but I imagine that old bony hound let the rabbit realize that he was a rabbit and he wasn't no dog. And he got him a meal. You know what? You understand what I'm saying? Us eagles, a lot of you claim the baptism of the Holy Ghost before you ever come in the message even. And I don't argue that. I believe it. Until my experience is I didn't do that, but I believe yours. You tell me you got the new birth somewhere. Well, you know what? You were sitting out there in the new denominations thinking you was Baptist. You was thinking you was Methodist and Presbyterians. Just having yourself a good time, you know, and going over and everything else. You never did. You didn't even know what an ego was. You didn't know what a Christian was, did you? Come on, be honest. You thought a Christian was because he's good and going to church and being nice and you know and doing everything nice and sure now we know that's part of it. But what's a Christian? Born again experience. All that was wonderful, but that was good things. But see, one day you realize that you were no Presbyterian. You wouldn't know Methodist, you wouldn't know Baptist, you wouldn't know chicken. You come to a realization. Now, I'm going to say it because I'll come back to this. See, this message should bring you and I to a realization that <laughs> there ain't no chicken going to take this message. <laughs> right? Because it would be like the lady said, you know, did he call me a buzzard? You know, talking about Brother Ryan's message. And this other sister said, but he called me an eagle. Hey, right. yeah. You got to be an eagle to have eagle food. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so the things people use to try to prove a point, they, they don't prove anything. They prove sometimes how dumb we are to want to use them. Because that eagle was born an eagle. He wasn't born to chicken and then become an eagle. And it took him a long time to find out he was an eagle. It took you and I a long time to find out we're eagles. We're not chickens. And like I've always told you, that old eagle was down in the barnyard. Right? And one day his mama come along screaming, he jumped up on the post, we know the story, and he soared in the sky. Right? And he soared around as an eagle. And he realized he was an eagle. Now I know you don't like the rest of my story, but it's all right. It's true. You have to agree. Because see, one day that old eagle, he realized he was an eagle. You know what he does? Him and mama and daddy is flying over the chicken yard. And all at once, all his brothers and sisters and his mama and what he thought was his mama and daddy, you know, all at once, they looked like a good Kentucky Fried Chicken meal. <laughs> and they better run from the old boy because he's not a chicken. He said, oh, no, he loved his mama. I don't <laughs> See, you're not understanding. That eagle, when he become an eagle, them chickens better run, but... <laughs> Because that was his nature. It wouldn't be that he remembered how good his mother was. He'd remember how good an old-fashioned meal is. I'm just carnal, I know. But you think about it. Well, Brother Brown never made that illustration. I didn't say he did. I said I did. But is it true? You know, is it true? Let's stand together. come down to the communion part forgive me for joking or anything because it's not a place to joke but I don't mean it as a joke I mean it's the truth and you're going to find out you're an eagle you're not going to go out there and try to sail over and destroy all them things no no we would try to help everybody 
do anything we could to help any denominational person. They call in, want prayer, we pray for them, right? right. We pray this is sincerely. It's just making a point. The, but there's got to be a day you and I are going to find out we're eagles. Right. And we're not going to be scratching in the chicken yard. Them two soul doctrines and seven thunder virtues and river Jordan doctrines, they become worms and we don't want them. We want a fresh keel that'll keep going that way. That's right. And never stop. But it'll also go back that way. And never find a beginning. If I can preach anything whatsoever to you as what I'm trying to bring, is to get you to see God never had a beginning. Yeah. That's right. And if you have eternal life, the eternal life you have never had a beginning. But you've got to receive it to have it. Just as Jesus, I've illustrated over and over, right? Jesus stood as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, correct? But now what if he had never come to Calvary 2,000 years ago? It would have meant that was false prophecy. He would have been saying something that wasn't true. He had to come to that place. There was a day you and I was lost and doomed and on our way to hell. We had to accept eternal life. Yes. We had to accept the pardon to be set free. But once we accepted it, we find out we're just as eternal yeah, as He is. Right. Right. Find out with that eternal life that I have never had no beginning. That's a wonderful thing. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which He was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After this same manner also, after this same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So let's just have a few moments of silent prayer, just praying one for another. Remember these that are sick among us, right? and just pray that God will right, manifest His Word in the healings of the bodies and the, and the deliverance of the souls. And, Set us all free in Him, all right? <clears throat> we thank You, Father, for Your Word. Your Word is true. We ask You now that You would just come and just be with us as we go into the communion, Lord. Remember those that are sick among us because you said you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from destruction. We know Sister Thomas, our Lord, her blood pressure is just running up 200 and all like that, Lord, and it's a dangerous thing. But we plead the blood of our Lord and Savior over her, Lord, at this time and believing that you'll take care of everything, make all well. We thank you and we just commit everything into your hands now. Forgive our sins and lead us by thine understanding and guide us now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said he took bread and blessed it. Father, we thank you that this bread, Lord, has went through the, the part of being cooked and made to where it can be consumed into the human body. And we believe you. We believe you done that. You went through a life. You paid a price. And you became that bread of life, that word, Lord. And may our thoughts be solely upon thy word, that you were the word. And Lord, 
And we pray that you would just, in, in making our understanding, be there. That we'd see this is not your body. This is only in representation. That your body is really the word. But we eat upon these natural things as an example. So we ask you to just bless each one that partakes. Sanctify the bread and the partakers in the name of Jesus Christ. Thousands of years mankind has been through these things. And what confusion has come out of it. Some people in the message even don't take the communion because they say the Lord's already come. And, uh, you know, some believe it's, and, and they would laugh at the ones who believe that it is a literal body and, and blood of the Lord. But what would be the difference in your thoughts? Well, why would it be any different? What would? Why can't we just see what it is? It represents, and in representation, then we can believe the truth. Thank God for the truth, right? Father, we thank you for this wine that's went through the process and gets better each day. We ask you now that you would sanctify the wine. It represents your blood, and Lord, as we eat the little piece of bread, and then as we drink this. A little, little bit of wine that tomorrow it'll be blood cells in our body for us to live by and we thank you you died to pay the price now sanctify us the partakers that we may all be one together in you in Jesus name come morning I walk by the river I'll rest me the evergreen tree I'll carry my cross through the midnight I'm morning there's glory for me sometimes I'm despised and rejected and I question, Father, how long did I take one more look at Mount Calvary? And it gives me the strength to go on. Come morning, I'll walk by the river I'll rest near the evergreen tree I'll carry my cross through the midnight come morning there's glory for me think about it Think about what God's done for you and I. He's not left us in blind darkness and wondering. We might not like sometimes the answers we get, but we know that they're perfect. And they can't be added to. And he couldn't change it. You said, but, but Brother Dale like sickness or something you say I prayed and I prayed and Brother Brandon said if you've done something wrong confess it get rid of it right? but said if you can cover everything and know that it's pure and clean he said then just stand there and say God, God's trying you well why wouldn't we want to wouldn't it be wonderful to think about God trying us to see if we're right, you know, of what's going on. But isn't that a wonderful thing? It's not a, a bad thing. He's trying to see what you'll do. Like I said this morning, then don't ask the devil for a weather forecast. You're not going to get the right one. Ask God, and he says, 
I put them there and that's on the doctor now. He said, I made them sick. And he said, they come out of it saying, by stripes I'm healed. I said, thank you. Now he allowed the sickness to come to test us. What are we going to do with it? Let's protect it. You can be seated for a moment while we read the scriptures, then we'll go into the foot washing. Did, did Janet, did they call back to tell you anything about Sister Audrey? Okay. Because they're supposed to call back there they made it. They was taking her over to the hospital, so they don't know where they put her in the hospital or not. It'll just, uh, it'll be much in prayer. John 13 and verse 2, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas his carrot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, You are not all clean. So after he had washed, the disciples, washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ver you done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, this you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Let's stand together. Father, we just ask you to go with us now as we go to the furtherment of the foot washing and Lord and just be with each one and bless and guide us and give us understanding of what all this means and then be with each one on the way home. Give everybody a safe journey. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.